So wait to nice. welcome to this video lesson on chapter 16, Capitulum Sextum Decimum. Um, title is Tempestas, which means storm or weather in Latin. That's where we get tempest from. Navis Romana, Roman ship we can see in the picture. Uh, this uh, is where we get navy and naval from, Navis. Italia inter duo maria interes. Italy is in between two seas. Quorum alterum quod super Italium situm est, mare superum sue hadriaticum appellator. Uh, one of which, which is situated above Italy, is called the upper sea, mare superum, or the Adriatic. Okay, so that is to the northeast, um, and so it's above Italy to, in some sense. Alterum infra Italium situm, mare inferum sue tuscum. The other, situated below Italy, is called the Lower Sea, Mare Inferum, or the Tuscan Sea, Tuscum. Um, I can point out here, in English we call this one the Tyrrhenian Sea, usually. In Latin it's Mare Inferum, Lower Sea, or you could say Mare Tuscum or Mare Terranum. Terranum and Tuscum both essentially mean Etruscan. So there were a lot of Etruscan communities in Italy, central Italy, especially to the um, western side um, before the Romans took over Italy. And so that's why they called it the Tyrrhenian or the Tuscan Sea, both of those words referring to Etruscans. Totum illud mare, longum et latum, quod inter Europam et Africam interest, mare nostrum appellator a Romanis all that long and wide sea, which is in between Europe and Africa, is called Mare Nostrum, or our sea, by the Romans. And of course they called it our sea because it belonged to them. Their empire surrounded it on all sides. They also sometimes called it Mare Internum, the internal sea, because it was inside of the empire. Urbs Roma non ad mare sed ad tiberim flumen cita est. The city Rome is not, I'm sorry, is situated not at the sea, known ad mare, but at the Tiber River. We might say on the Tiber River as well. So you might be used to ad meaning to or towards, but remember it can also mean at or on. Viginti milia pasum a mari, 20 miles or 20 thousands of paces literally from the sea. Remember our word mile comes from mile pasus, a thousand paces in Latin. A Roman mile is a thousand paces or five thousand of their pedes feet. Um, it's a little bit less than our modern miles, which are definitely based on the Roman mile. Quod altem paulum aquae est in Tiberi. Um, because, however, there is a little bit of water in the Tiber, magna in aves in eo flumine navigare non posunt. Big ships cannot sail in that river. Itique parvae tantum naves romam adiunt. And so only small ships go to Rome. Osiam omnes naves adire posunt. All ships can go or are able to go to Ostia. Idenim est opidum maritimum quod magnum portum habet. Uh, for it is a maritime or seaboard town which has a big port. Ad ostium tibris sita est Ostia. At the door or mouth of the Tiber is Ostia. Notice the name of this town, Ostia, which is the port town of Rome. It comes from the same root as os, which means mouth, and ostium, which means doorway in Latin. Ostium siwe os, fluminus dicitor, is locus quo flumen in mare influit. The ostium, or the os of a river, the doorway or the mouth of a river, we might say, is called that place where the river runs into the sea. Ostia sita est eo loco quo tibris in mare inferum influit. Ostia is situated at that place where the Tiber flows into the lower sea. Remember that's also called the Tuscan or Tyrrhenian Sea. Alia opida maritima, other seaboard towns, quae magnos portos habent, which have big harbors, sunt brundisium araminum genua putiole, ar brundisium Araminum, Genoa, and Puteole. Haec omnia opera, all these towns, in Ora Maritima Sita Sunt, are situated on the sea coast. Ora Maritima est finis terrae unde mare incipit. 
the seacoast is the end of the land, Finis Terrae, whence or from which, unde, the sea begins. Portus est locus in ora maritima. Port is a place on the seacoast, quo naves ad terram adire posunt, where the ships are able to go to the land. In ora Italiae multi portus sunt. On the shore of Italy there are many ports. Ex omnibus terris from all lands in portus Italiae venunt naves. Ships come into the ports of Italy. Ships quae merces in Italia mehunt, which carry or transport goods merces to Italy. Notice that merx merces, which means good or mer merchandise, uh, is related to mercator, meaning merchant, and Mercury, who is the god of trade, travel, and trickery. Merces sunt res quas mercatores imunt aquendunt. So goods or merchandise are things which merchants, mercatores, buy and sell. Imunt is buy, windunt sell. Remember we get vendor and vending machine from that. Non modo merces, not only goods, sedetiam homines, but also people, human beings, nawabus wehunter, are carried by ships. Portus ostiensis, the ostian port, so ostiensis is an adjective made from ostia, the town name. So the ostian port, the port of ostia, we might say. Simper planus est, is always full. Hominum, of people. Qui in alias terras navargari volunt, who want to sail to other lands. Is qui navargari vult, adit nautam, the one who wants to sail, goes to a sailor, qui bonum nawem habet who has a good ship. Now notice the word nauta, which means sailor, is related to nawis. We get nautical, uh, astronaut, cosmonaut, nautilus, and a lot of other words from that. Si aer tranquillus est, if the air is calm or tranquil, necesse est ventum operire, it is necessary to wait for the wind. So operire is to wait for, it's a synonym of expectare. It's a deponent verb, so it looks passive but translates active. Ventus es aer, the wind is air, qui moveter, which is being moved. Cum nullus ventus super mare flot, when no wind blows above the sea, tranquillum est mare, the sea is tranquil, calm. Cum magnus ventus flot, when a big wind blows, mare turbidum est, the sea is turbulent or stormy, or disturbed, something like that. Tempestas es magnus ventus, a tempest or storm is a big wind. Qui mare turbat, which disturbs the sea. Ac fluctus facit, and makes waves. Qui altiores sunt quam naves, which are higher. Altiores, notice the comparative adjective ending with the I-O-R. Comparative adjectives always have third declension um, you know, case ending, so that's why we have the ace there. So which are higher, altiores, than ships, quam naves. Nautai tempestates metunt, sailors fear storms. Nam magni fluctus, naves aqua implere posunt, for big waves, magni fluctus, are able to fill up ships, or can fill up ships, aqua, with water. Tum naves et nautai in mare merguntur, then ships and sailors are submerged into the sea, meaning they drown. We see in the picture a, mm, what would we say, a tempestas mala, a bad storm. Fluctus, this word for wave, is of course uh, fourth declension masculine. Nautai nec turbi uh, mari turbido, nec mari tranquilo, navigare volunt. So the neck neck is neither nor. Sailors neither want uh, to sail in a turbulent sea, mari turbido, we could also say a stormy sea, nor in a tranquil or calm sea, nec mari tranquilo. So obviously if it's stormy they could be sunken, if it's calm, problem is there's not enough wind to fill their sails, so they can't go anywhere. Itaque in portu ventum secundum operiuntur, and so they wait for a favorable wind, ventum secundum, in harbor, in portu. 
Now, operiunter is again a synonym for expectant. It's a deponent verb, so it looks passive but translates active. Also want to point out secundus we've seen meaning second before. It literally means following. So the number following the first number is the second number. If you have a following wind, it means it's pushing you from behind. If a wind is blowing from behind you, it blows you uh, quickly forward. So that is a favorable wind for sailing. So that's how the same word secundus can mean both second and favorable. Id es ventus qui a tergo flot. That is a wind which blows from the back or from behind, we might say. So a favorable wind, ventus secundus, is again a wind which blows from behind you. Vento secundo, ablative case, with a favorable wind. Naves e portu egrediuntur. Ships go out of the harbor. Vela, vento implenter. The sails are filled with wind. Ac naves plenis, velis, per mare wahunter. And ships, with their sails full, plenis, velis, ablative plural, are carried, wahunter, through the sea, per mare. Well, that completes our first section. I hope that made sense. I hope um, you notice um, some of these new um, deponent verbs like operiunter. They look passive, but translate active. Another one there at the end, egrediunter. They go out of the, the harbor. So it looks like that should be they are gone out or something. But you just translate it active even though it looks passive. All right. Valete omnes.